Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. Okay, Curtis and Jordan. You know, yesterday when I saw them kiss, I was like, you got to be out. Your <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? Here's my issues with this scene. Long story short, Curtis is a ship jumper. Okay, Curtis is not the type of guy who will work things out. Curtis is the type of guy who, the first sign of trouble, he's already got one foot out the relationship. Okay? So, also, I just, I don't understand why they're making Jordan this stupid. Okay? I have a huge problem with what they're writing with, with, with dumbing people down for plot purpose. Okay? At one point, she was almost ready to sit there and, and, um, you know, go with him and sit there and not boost. And, you know, she stopped herself. But I'm like, boo, you know that this guy is actually married. And he's willing to sit there and just practically tell her to kick rocks so he can sit there and, and get with you in the sheets. This is the type of guy that you actually want to sit there and deal with. It. And it also kind of pisses me off because... You know, during the whole, you know, Greenland or Greenland thing or whatever, my dude was sitting there kicking ass and taking names. Okay. He was there to sit there and fight for Trina to bring people back home. And I was like, this is awesome. And he gets back. And once again, they decide to be like, hey, remember that trash ass version of Curtis? Yeah, he's still there. You know, I, I just don't understand it. You know, there's one point where she's like, you know, I, I want to do this, whatever, but uh, am I a rebound to you? I'm like, bro, oh, what are you... Do you not see the wedding ring on his... I, I just, I don't understand that, you know? And there's a point where she's sitting there talking about how she was ready to sit there and fight for their relationship, and he just walked out and, and walked into her arms, and, you know, she was like, well, I was fine with that, and, you know, I let that go, and I'm just like, what? Wait, 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 wait. you were... You were cool with, you know, left, left your arms to, to, to leap into another woman's arms. You were just like, I, I, I'm okay with that. And I'm like, who are you? Because part of me was like, did he actually still build people like you? I, I just, I don't understand. Like, pretty much doormats is what I'm sitting there saying, which is bad on so many levels. Because I'm like, yo, listen, Jordan looks bad, okay, she is an accomplished woman, beautiful, smart, and intelligent, and you're pretty much not there choosing to hang out with bumps, okay, you, you're literally just not there hanging out with Kurt is talking about, you know, he's all like, oh, well, you know, I got a lot going on, but you could, could you give me some time, and she's like, yeah, sure, What? I just, I... <laughs> this is so dumb. This is so dumb for so many reasons. But it's even worse is that this woman is, is, is pretty much a damn goddess and you are slumming it with hell at this point. Just massive L's on so many levels. <sighs> Poor shit. You know, when Taggart said that the reason why you're so fixated on trying to do this stupidness with Trina and Spencer is because you don't want to sit there and try to fix the problems in your relationship. You know, you need to sit there and fight for your marriage. That's what you need to sit there and do and stop trying to use your damn daughter as a distraction. I'm going to take a gander at pretty much what Portia did. Yeah, I hear you. I'm still going to sit there and meddle in my daughter's life. Tiger's like, but she's not a little girl anymore. Yeah, but I just want to sit there and avoid my problems, so I'm just going to sit there and just, you know, fixate on, on my daughter's love life. Tiger, I'm pretty sure you wish you was doing anything then sit there trying to talk sense into this woman's head. 
anything. You could have literally done anything and you would have used your time on this earth a lot more wiser than dealing with all that messiness. So I, I almost feel bad for you. Almost. <laughs> yeah. I think my dude is a little bit way too cool with the fact that, you know, she cheated on him and he's all still like, oh, I'm besties and I want to sit there in your corner and I want you to sit there and fight. Like, nah. No, 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 no. Well, for plot purposes, sure, you'd be, you be her cheerleader. That's, that's cool, I guess. There's a word for that. Pretty start. Pretty sure it starts with a C. Yeah, I'm just going to let that go. So, Cody was hanging out with James, um, trying to get him excited to go to camp. He's worried about the horses and the bugs and everything like that. And, you know, Cody talks about Dante, how, how they had, you know, really good friendship and they taught each other stuff. And it was just a nice little scene. And I, again, I want to sit there and point that out because I know there's so many people that do not like Cody for reasons that I still just can't fathom. But, you know, I feel like he's trying. I feel like he's trying, okay? Um, I feel like he I, I feel like he gets another W today, okay? Um, he's still kind of iffy on the whole changing his name legally. I mean, um, you know, declaring that he's, he's Leopold's son because let's be honest. That truth comes out, all that money and everything like that is going to go bye-bye, and I'm pretty sure he's probably going to be facing some fines and maybe in jail. Who knows? Um, so you got that going on. Sasha was with Nina, talking about she was going to advocate for her with Willow and Michael. They had a nice scene together. They come a long way. Nina's eyes is always going to be like her daughter, pretty much in every way that counts, and vice versa. So it's a nice little, nice little scene, you know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm more than generous to sit there and give Nina a reprieve for the day. But then she wound up going to Maxie. 37 minutes in, into the episode, and Maxie tells her that it was Cody that saw everything that was going on, and he was pretty much ready to quote-unquote streak, which is... Just a nice little term for just get butt naked um, on national television. And at that point, you know, Sasha made a beeline right, right to Cody. Liesl was still acting somewhat icy to um, Scotty. Throw it out a little bit when, you know, she wanted to know what's going on with Cody in the situation and why you're representing him and all this mess. There's a point where they leave. And, you know, Lisa has this cake or whatever. And, um, you know, James is there. There's a part of me that was just being really super petty. But like, you know, I could just only imagine if, if, if Scotty just had my pettiness and saw Lisa trying to struggle with the door and the cake and everything. But like, damn, that sucks. Hope you don't drop the cake. I probably would have sat there and just waited for a little bit and waited until I felt like she had enough struggling. And then I would have came and opened the door. But, you know, he was there. He was a gentleman. He said that he was going to, um, you know, give her a ride home or wherever. And she was like, you know, she said, sure. So in, in Scotty's eyes, you know, that's progress, you know. Even though I think that her reason for icing him out is completely and utterly acidine, but whatever. I'm a very petty person, so that's just how I am. Josh came to Sonny to sit there and ask Sonny to fire Dex. And long story short, Sonny was like, listen, that's on Dex. If Dex wants to sit there and fire, if, if Dex wants to sit there and quit, he could sit there and quit. Um, Josh is like, well, you know, Sonny was like, hey, listen, could we sit there and start to make some progress or whatever? And she was like, oh, that depends if you give me what I want. 
<sighs> sure, whatever. But he pretty much just said the same thing. He was just like, it's up to Dax. So in a lot of ways, that conversation was somewhat moved. Um, Dax is outside, and you know he wants to sit there and see Sonny. Maybe, I don't know. And um, Gladys comes in there, and Gladys is like, oh, I want to sit there and see Sonny. And you know, Frank is like, nah, dude, there's a meeting going on. The president or the damn Pope is not going to be sent to interrupt in that meeting, so you just have to wait. Meanwhile, Frank gave um, Dex an envelope, and she saw all that sh money and <laughs> the look on her face. If you can picture a 90s cartoon with the eyes just bulging out, looking at all that money, yeah, listen, she was like, oh. You know, afterwards, she came to Dex like, oh, so, 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 what are you, what are you doing? You betting on horses? Like, <laughs> you know, pretty much how you, how you got that or whatever. And Dex said what he said. Saw Joss, and they went in the back alley to have this cartoon fight. And I literally do mean a somewhat cartoon fight. Dex was not happy that Joss went in there to speak for Sonny, you know, speak speak for him as far as firing Dex. And um, they seemed like they got into a little somewhat of an argument. Then they started kissing, and everything just went right back to normal. So it was like, it seemed very humorous and just laughable. Like, I literally started laughing. I, I genuinely cracked up when I saw that. Um, meanwhile, Gladys wants to then try to talk to Sonny, which Sonny, of course, is like, ugh, you. Talking about something with deception, and, you know, you can invest now, and everything like that, and Sonny was like, oh, okay, so so how much, how, how much of a cut you want to get? You know you want to get a cut. Once again, I started laughing, and he was pretty much like, no, I'm good. I'm good. And he walked off now. Um, Gladys talked to Sonny. I um, mean, Gladys talked to Miss Wu about what's going on with Sonny. And I was like, damn, Gladys, you are. You don't sell out anybody. <laughs> Literally, Gladys is like damn near soulless. Near soulless. Yeah, she did step up for Sasha. But she also had no problem turning in, you know, turning, um, what's his name? <sighs> Brando. Turning, you know, turning in Brando, turning in Deck, I mean, um, Dev, Sonny, to sit there and will literally sell anyone down the river to get what she needs to get. And that's just pretty effed up. But in some ways, I can respect that, you know. And so, I mean, I would respect it more at least if she owned up to it. At least if she knew that she, you know, what? Yeah, I'm a heartless snake. That's who I am. I can hate it, but I can respect it, you know. I don't know. I almost forgot about the conversation with Deck, I mean with Dante and, and Michael because it seemed like it was somewhat pointless. You know, Michael being a dick to um Dante in the beginning, talking about Nina. You know, because Dante was like, yo, isn't it up to Willow to sit there and decide if she wants to have a relationship with, with Nina or not? And I get it, Michael Smith there and being protected, but you know, Dante did make a good point. And he started talking about Sonny and uh, I'm not gonna lie, it just really didn't go anywhere. Um, towards the end of the episode, Josh was gonna did, you know, getting ready to talk to Michael, probably ream him out about the whole um, Dex thing and everything. And I'm like, yeah, listen, Josh, stay in your lane. Listen, I, I don't care if you're sitting there knocking boots at the man. Um, he has he had a deal with with um with Dex, and he changed the the, the deal because hey, listen, that's his dad. He gets to do that. Is it wrong? Yeah, on some level. Um, and if you sit there and say you're going to do something, you decide to change your mind, you did kind of renege on the deal. But, um, you know, once again, it almost seemed like you didn't really listen to what Dex said. Dex was like, listen, I can fight my own battles. And she said, okay, yeah, sure. So what does she do? She goes to Michael and sit there and start fighting for you again. Like, Just like Carly.
and stuff without any of the experience. Yeah, I feel like that's about it. I can't really think of anything else to want to happen. With. So with that being said, I'm going to go. If I did miss anything, come to the live stream tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. I'll be going live tonight for an hour, so definitely come through. And hopefully I will see you soon um, in the next video. I, I totally forgot my outro, so yeah.